हरिओम हरिओम फ्रेंड्स एज यूजल वी विल ऑल बिगिन विद प्रेयर ऑफ इन्वोकेशन एंड दैट हैपन्स टू बी ऑल्सो द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस इवनिंग एज वाई द प्रेयर ऑफ इन्वोकेशन विच इज कॉल एज मंगला चरणम ब्रह्मानं विदधाति पूर्वं यो वै वेदांश्च प्रहिणोति तस्मै तम देवत्मबुद्धि प्रकाशं मुमुक्षु वै शरणमहम प्रपद्ये ओ शांति 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 ओ नमो नमो ब्रह्म विद्या संप्रदायकर्तृभ्यो वंशिभ्यो महद्यो नमो गुरुभ्य सर्वोपलवरिता प्रजान प्रत्यगर्थो ब्रह्मवाहमस्मी ब्रह्मवाहमस्मी ओ वेदाताय गुरव शाता संसिनेनावादीन जेन्द्र संघपवे योगींद्रवंजा मोहद्वाकराय भगवत्दिधा बिभ्रते तस्म भाष्य नमोस्तु सतत पूर्णा बोधात्म टॉपिक इज एंड इज दो अपियर्स वेरी सिंपल येट बिकॉज द वे आई वुड वॉन्ट अ ट्रीटमेंट टू बी गिवेन टू इट इज एन एग्जॉस्टिव वन विच इज kind of a little orthodox method in which questions are raised in form of purva paksha as an opponent and the answers are presented by siddhanti so this is the method and style in which most of the books the earliest books or even the advanced books are are presented a style of purva paksha and siddhanti the purva paksha means an opponent and siddhanti means the one who's who has to present or prove make evident whatever he wants to show we have all been introduced to doing and prayer of invocation and very often it is called as a prayer of invocation the sanskrit word for this is gala charanam and that what is conveyed by the prayer of invocation is not as 100% as what is meant by the word mangala charanam if you ever look at this word mangala charanam it is composed of these two words mangalam and acharanam the samasika which is the samas which is the compound word and it means mangalasya acharanam mangalam means auspiciousness that what is auspicious is mangalam and acharanam means a conduct acharanam means conduct an action whether that action is a physical action or the action is a verbal action or a mental action any form of action which in some way is connected to that what can be called as auspiciousness any form of action which then is connected to auspiciousness becomes mangala charanam 
this is how grammatically we should be able to see this. The English word prayer of invocation would mean to invoke something, to wake up something. If you are going to wake up a lion from its sleep, a tiger from its sleep, you are invoking the wrath of the tiger, the anger of the tiger. You are infuriating the animal. Invocation has got some meaning like that. The word to invoke means as if something was passive and from its state of passiveness, you have you have what do they call activated something you have provoked something provoked something though the word provoke has got a negative connotation yet it means that you have provoked the god to bless you you can call it in a little better way is to you have instigated otherwise, you have instigated a God to bless you. We say, this is not what 100% the word Mangalacharan means. But it is for sure that such a prayer is always expected at the beginning of your studies and at the end of that session. Sometimes we do the Vaidika Shanti part. Very often the common one is to begin with Sahana Vavatu and end it with Purnamadaha, etc. You know this. Yet the question is that you may do it out of fondness. You may do it out of just since the tradition demands. But what exactly is the significance of this Mangala Charanam? You do several things and doing several things blindly. Sometimes you take medicines and you need not know how the medicine works, how it works. Yet something becomes more effective if it is understood in its perspective. Only then. So therefore, put it on a silent mode. Therefore, here we begin. I have chosen a portion from a very advanced book, a very advanced Prakrana Grantha titled as Tatva Sandhanam. It's a huge book, but uh, I have chosen a small portion of that to introduce not only the style, but also the content. Here it begins. Once when that prayer of invocation or the prayer of Mangala Charana is done, the opponent comes over there and asks a question. Why do you really need to do this? Is it really required to be done? Don't think that, you know, you have teenagers asking this question and the mothers don't have the answer. And therefore they say, oh, we have to do it. It is good. It will bring you good luck. You know? And then that is just a way to keep somebody's mouth shut. You say that it will bring you more money, it will bring you blessings, so on and so forth. We are going to, the opponent is going to ask a question because that person is not going to be simply satisfied by your answers, which are, which are, you know, what do they call? meant actually to sweep the issues under the carpet where you dodge those questions you dodge the questions under the under the pretext of answering it or you know presenting it presenting yourself with more politeness decency here the opponent is not going to be just satisfied with that kind of a thing he says, Nanu Grantharam He Mangala Charanam Anupapannam. This is his claim. It is Anupapannam. It is, it, it is not at all necessary. It is not rationalized why one should be doing the Mangala Charanam, a prayer 
right in the beginning. You could be doing several other things, maybe you eat your food sumptuously so that you are not hungry and you can write or study or do something properly. Maybe you just eat that much quantity and that is understood that you are eating only that much quantity which is not going to induce sleep to you when you are when you're studying. So having eaten only that quantity, then you study, we can understand. But you are over here saying, doing Mangala Charanam, one should, one should start the... Ha. Huh. Then here he says, why, why does he even have an objection? You can have an objection, but you should have a justified reason even to raise an objection. So the question is asked, why are you having such an objection that I'm doing the prayer of Mangala Charanam and you have an objection? He says, that's because Natavat Pratyaksha Pramanam Pramana Prayojana Yoho Abhavat because there are two things which I see missing. One is the pramanam, why one should be doing the, the pramanam means the appropriate means which makes an object evident is called as pramanam. Pramanam is not evidence, but it is only the means which makes it evident. Why should it be done? What is this Mangala Charanam? So some Pramanam is required, which should be able to show you, which should be able to show you, yes, this is Mangala Charanam. And then another thing, another reason that is there is Prayojanam. Prayojanam means the purpose of doing the Mangala Charanam. When both these things are missing over here, then how can one ever say that it needs to be done? Pramanam is also missing. The purpose why it should be done is also missing. Then why should this be even done? So now look at the exhaustive treatment how the traditional books are giving you, you know. And th this is what I wanted to introduce for many days to several people, is to bring to you the wealth and the style, because it is simply not giving you some management techniques or some tips. But look at the way how exhaustively and how clearly it enters into the topic. You are students of Yoga Sutra. And how many pramanas are mentioned over there? How many pramanas are acceptable in the Yoga Shastra? You have three pramanas. Three pramanas are there. Pratyaksha, Anuman, and Agama. There are three means, three valid means of knowing. One is Pratyaksha, your direct perception, which helps you know, is the means. Anumana, which is <coughs> huh? inference. It is called as inference, to infer. And then Agama Pramana, which is the Shruti Pramana. So that what is brought to you by Pratyaksha Pramana is not what is, what is, or that what is brought to you by the Anumana Pramana is not what is brought to you by the Pratyaksha Pramana. That what is shown to you by the Shruti Pramana or the Shastra Pramanam is not what comes to you through Pratyaksha Pramana. So every Pramana has got its own object to show. So here the opponent is saying that none of these Pramanas are able to show you why the Mangala Charanam should be done. 
and when nothing becomes evident to you through the valid means and yet if it is acceptable to you then this is pure foolishness and here we are not interested in your foolishness you could maintain any any kind of idiosyncrasy that you want we are not going to be supportive of your idiosyncrasy we do not have any objections if you have your idiosyncrasies but the problem begins when you are going to make your idiosyncrasy as presented as a fact then it is dangerous you know some years ago i was in goa and then some gentleman and this people had come saying that you know our clothes carry the vibrations of other people with whom we get in contact when you are traveling by buses and trains so you carry their negative energy negative vibrations and it is there in your clothes when you put those clothes to wash in the washing machine those vibrations stay over there and when you take them out and put other clothes to wash even they also get contaminated now this sort of a the sort of a proposal is going to make a person mad because he is always going to be suspicious as whose vibrations my clothes are catching these days and this will only create nothing else but an attitude of holier than thou then somebody told them that therefore in order to remove those vibrations you should light an incense stick and then take it around in your wipe, the washing machine in that pit and once this is done all those vibrations get washed away washing machine also cannot wash away the vibrations so only then it goes away now basically you are talking about several things one are there such vibrations two do your clothes catch those vibrations three after having caught those vibrations do those vibrations get uh, uh, resi- do they make a residual uh, residence in your washing machine and then for after uh, taking a incense stick burning incense stick around does it go away there are several issues and none of these things become evident to you through any of the pramanas therefore if you want to keep your idiosyncrasies please maintain them we are not going to be against somebody taking and uh, lighting an incense stick and keeping it, it in a washing machine you could burn the whole pack of incense sticks over there we have no problem but you are creating as if this idiosyncrasy is a fact we are not interested in that please show us if it is a fact then that fact should become evident to you through a proper means he is asking a question why this mangala charanam should be done do you have any proper means which shows you that so <clears throat> mangala charanasya kartavyatayaha atindriyatvat na tavat pratyaksha pramanam what if when you do the mangala charanam your claim is that it creates certain punya it generates punya it generates a virtue okay now this punya which is in form of dharma or punya papa both of these are not not something that becomes tangible to you it is not tangible and therefore it is not pratyaksham and therefore because it is not pratyaksham you cannot even say mangala charanam is a something that is used to create the punya and therefore one must do it and it is it is seen by the eyes heard by the ears smelled by the nose no sir atindriyatvat because that whole thing is not a subject matter of inference or of the direct perception atindriyatvat sir okay let us accept that it does create a punya 
and it may, according to you it helps a person accomplish whatever activity he has undertaken to its fullest extent right grantha samapti is what you are expecting you are expecting that the topic that you have started the study that you have started let this study be completely accomplished let it reach its finality is what you are because nobody wants any activity to be to be to be left about it you want that activity to bear its fruit and therefore you involve in the activity your activity is not purposeless and not only that it is purposeless but you want to see that the purpose is fulfilled okay so, very obvious sir you make say that this this mangala charanam creates punyam but we see that there are people who do not do the mangala charanam and yet their books are completed one another variety that we see is people who do mangala charanam and yet their studies remain incomplete then you are saying that mangala charanam is something that is going to help you complete the studies this claim is falsified since this claim is falsified there is no need to do the mangala charanam okay there is no need to do the mangala charanam this is what he says so he had said that there are two things one that there is no pramana the other one is because there is no prayojanam okay since the pramana is also missing prayojanam is also missing and therefore mangala charanam should not be done who said this this is not the conclusion of our evening topic this is just the purva paksha ah this is the what is it yes purva paksha the opponent he is raising the doubts and please remember one thing as a rule when your opponent the purva paksha is stronger then what is presented by the siddhanti becomes even more strong it is not standing on a flimsy ground oh but then we believe we feel it believe feel it or those things are all okay on one side what you believe remains with you what you feel stays with you but just because you believe and just because you feel it that way does not mean that it is a fact you see and over here our concern is with the fact if it is not a fact we are not interested you can keep on doing it oh it does not matter us you can keep on doing it so the first pramanam is pratyaksha pramanam he says the pratyaksha pramanam does not show you why the mangala charanam should be done then comes the second pramanam which is anumana pramanam anumana pramana inference works in a particular way you know what is the example bene for the inference ah uh, samanya to drishta anumanaha the common common kind of inferential knowledge is that he, there is fire in the mountain vah nimanayam parvataha why do you say that hey, i see the smoke rising from that mountain what are you saying but what is your knowledge there is fire now you see the smoke in the mountain and your knowledge is there is fire in the mountain did you see the fire you haven't seen the fire and yet your knowledge is that there is fire in the mountain if you were to see the smoke 
and then the knowledge was there is smoke in the mountain yes fine but you are seeing the smoke and the knowledge is there is fire in the mountain our question to you is how did you know that there is fire you would know it is fire had you to see the flames or to feel the heat on your skin then you can say that i know it is fire but how do you know it is fire without seeing the flames or without feeling the heat that's because this knowledge it is a fire is brought to you not by direct perception but through inference now you see how inference works inference is working this is and this inference is an independent means of knowledge perception is an independent means of knowledge but perception has shown you only smoke whereas inference has shown you that there is fire perception did not show you the fire in the mountain but without the smoke without seeing the smoke you will not infer there is fire so that what is responsible for you to even conclude that it is fire in the mountain is is the smoke so the purva paksha over here says we do not have any such pratyaksha linga we do not have any such pratyaksha that perceptible uh, 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 signal signal lingam indication there is no such indication and therefore even the why the mangala charanam should be done does not even have inference as its source all right then you are going to say well there is a shruti there is some shastra the veda says that mangala charanam should be done can you show us that and we the the siddhanti does not have any such shruti to support what he is saying to make it evident what he is saying and therefore na tavat shruti pramanam api even shruti pramanam you do not have thus when every form of of means of knowledge is not there and yet you want to say that it should be done then this is nothing more than only your insistence adamantness duragraha it is called as duragraha ha <laughs> thus i we do not see any such thing in the prayojanam we don't see because the nastika people also are able to complete their books without any such prayer and people who do the such prayers of invocation also are found to have left their work incomplete and therefore that prayojanam grantha samapti which is your prayojanam is also not there it is missing you understand atrauchyate now the siddhanti speaks and he says granthaarambhe mangala charanam avashyam kartavyam this is the pratishya vakya the statement to be proved pratishya vakyam is granthaarambhe in the beginning of the granth in the beginning of your studies of the book what should be done what should be done a uh, drink cup of coffee and sit huh? so that you don't sleep no mangala charanam avashyam kartavyam must be done then you had said that there is no pramana so he says na tatra pramana bhavah there is pramanam 
which pramana do you have we have already cancelled the possibility of all the three pramanas which all pratyaksha pramana is not what he is going to tell you show you why mangala charanam should be done anumana pramana is not going to show you why the mangala charanam should be done even the uh, shastra pramanam agama pramanam is also not there and therefore the in absence of all the pramanas it cannot be proved got it this is what he had said who he uh -huh. what what do we call as an opponent in sanskrit purva paksha so anumita shreva pramanam very beautiful now now this, this is how it should go he says anumita shrutireva pramanam sir we also agree that it is not through any pratyaksha or anuman and we do not have any direct shruti to show you yet we are saying anumita shruti and inferential shruti veda vakya is there a statement of veda is there but how is that statement of veda it is inferential we do not have any direct statement to show you but we can infer that there must have had been a statement like this ha huh. then you are going to say such an inference is impossible why it is why why because because there is no, nothing like that kind of an inference he says yes there is, it is possible shishtacharatvena tad anumanatvat we can infer that there must have been such a shruti which is not available to us in the present times yet it was there because people follow that custom aha uh -huh. and which people are following that custom he says the vaidikas follow that custom people who are following the vedas are following such a custom and because they do so we can say there must have been a shruti like this it is not available to us such people are called as shishta anushishta means those who are belonging to the tradition of that learning anushishta okay all right all right sir what do you mean by that mangalam what do you mean by mangalam he says that this mangalam this is not left for anyone's imagination to interpret the meanings of these words mangalam mangalam means veda bodhita abhishta upakakam that it is an upaya it is and upaya upaya means upaya means it is uh, a way a way upaya means a way method correct it's a method upaya means a method method for what it is a method to attain abhishta upa abhishta to attain something which is desirable not desired ha huh. abhishta means that what is desirable ha huh? abhishta abhishta means ishta plus abhi abhishta abhishta upaya takam oh sir something that is desirable and it is a method to attain something that is desirable but how it is shown by the veda therefore veda bodhita abhishta upaya takam such a thing is called as mangalam okay such a thing is called as mangalam so all these elements have to be present in order for it to be called as mangalam 
that it should have it should be a method to attain something that is desirable and also that method is something which is shown to you by the veda veda bodhita abhishta upaya takam whatever it is we call that as mangalam that is mangalam okay and why do you call that as mangalam alaukika avigita shishta charatvat because this method is shown to us a method which is not inferred by our local uh, 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 deduction or analysis generalization or a deduction anvaya vyatireka and it is we are able to infer that from the various vaidika shishta people people who are respected by the tradition then that mangalatvam that whatever that mangalam is should have the quality of being mangalam only when it will have the quality of being mangalam then that activity can be called as mangala okay so that which has got mangalatva is called as mangalam what is that vignotsarana sadharana karanatvam vignotsarana sadharana karanatvam that it should have the capacity to remove the various obstacles and so it it has the capacity so it is a karanam it is the karanam at the same time how is it asadharan it is not which can be can be brought to you through through your local understanding local intelligence so this is mangalam he says <clears throat> एवं निर्विघ्न सामो मंगल आचरे अतया श्रुतिया मंगल सभीष्ट निर्विघ्न सामक निश्चीय बट सर नाउ दैट वी आर एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट यस दैट मंगल इज समथिंग दैट इज गिवेन टू यू बाय द शास्त्र एंड एट द सेम टाइम इट हैज द कैपेसिटी to remove the obstacles to complete whatever you have undertaken but then the main question still remains unanswered the main question still remains unanswered as why some people are able to complete the work without doing the mangala charanam and over there the vaidika says that now through the inference we will have to say on the strength of the inference we will have to say that they had done some mangalam in their previous life they had done some mangalam that some auspicious activity in their previous life and hence as a result of that it is that result is available now because an effect cannot be there without the cause an effect is not there without the cause if you are able to see the effect then the inference says that the cause has to be there and therefore they have done it but what about those people who have done it now and are not able to complete it over there we have to say that their mangalam did not have the as much strength to nullify the obstacles that were there so they had to do a mangalam which was even more in strength so this is therefore mangala is that what removes the vigna mangalam is that what removes the obstacle 
आहा ही सेज मंगल से विघ्न ध्वंसम ही फलम दी ओल्ड स्कूल ऑफ नयायिकाज द प्राचीन न्याय गिव्स अस दिस इट सेज दैट द मंगलम रिमूव्स द ऑब्स्टेकल it removes the obstacle oh uh, sorry the navya school the new school says that it removes the obstacles the old school says that it completes the work so here the new uh, uh, the old school and the new school of nayayikas both is presented so athava mangala charanasya vigna dhvamse eva phalam that only removing the obstacles is what the mangalam does yet you will require certain samagri for the work to be completed in presence of those elements and when the obstacles are not there then the work is completed okay here says <clears throat> एवं अप्रतिपत्ति अन्यथा प्रतिपत्ति विप्रतिपत्ति आदि निवृत्ति ही व्हाट आर द वेरियस ऑब्स्टेकल्स फॉर वन टू लीव द वर्क इनकंप्लीट अंडरस्टैंडिंग इनकंप्लीट इज अप्रतिपत्ति दैट वन इज नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड अन्यथा प्रतिपत्ति दैट ही अंडरस्टैंड समथिंग डिफरेंटली नॉट व्हाट इज मेंट ओवर देयर एंड विप्रतिपत्ति मींस he understands something exactly opposite when these three things are there then your understanding can never be complete or it cannot be called as understanding either so apratipatti anyatha pratipatti and vipratipatti there are three things Un incomprehension miscomprehension and exactly opposite comprehension these three things these are the obstacles these obstacles are removed and other thing is shishtachara pratibhacha evam adini bahuni phalani mangalasya bhavati so also the continuity of that tradition and also the brilliance of the intelligence etc are the various results phalas of mangalam so then what happens evam mangala charanena vighne nivritte when the obstacles are removed through the mangalam buddhi pratibhadi drishta karana kalapad granthasya samapti bhavati then in that case buddhi the intelligence pratibha buddhi pratibha means the brilliance of that intelligence etc grantha dharanam all these all these all these factors which are drishta karana okay not only are drishta karana you require even those factors which are drishta which are seen in presence of those seen factors though we may have several things in life which are required and yet one is not able to have like dashratha was an able man he had beautiful able wives and yet he was not able to have bear even a single child this is something that in something that prevents and therefore we have to conclude that there is adrishtam or that what is called as daivam so thus buddhi pratibhadi drishta karana kalapad such factors have to be present and at the same time the vigna which are the obstacles which are sitting unseen waiting to pounce upon you from those quarters which are not known have to be met and when those are met the work is accomplished therefore mangalam which nullifies those obstacles which are in waiting and then when you have the necessary qualification the work is accomplished 
here is the reason why we are saying that mangalam should be done this is the way we see it in the tradition why mangalam should be done that mangalam is not just simply saying that you tune your mind to the teacher and then absorb what the teacher is saying that will happen if the teacher is going to tell you something which is which is absorbing which is interesting then necessarily you will be tuned to the teacher so don't make it compulsory here it is said that why mangalam should be done because mangalam removes the obstacles and when you have the intelligence writing skills understanding skills will to understand then the work will be that book will be completed the studies will be accomplished hence mangalam should be done one should do mangalam this is how we see it from an orthodox system all right well thank you friends thank you for wave forum and thank you vibhaji again in spite of you know a little uh, rough beginning in the beginning with you know the technical problems that we had i am thankful to swami chidanji puja swami ji puja vibhaji and the team of wave forum to help us get connected over this webinar thank you very much